Okay, we're going to look at some sine and cos rule um, problems. And this is question one for the workshop we're going to do on March 12th. The first question is, well, actually all the questions, they want you to find out all the unknowns here. They want you to figure out these unknowns. Now, there's more than one way to do this question. You can do it in different ways. But let's just start with this angle theta right here. Because we only know one angle. We're going to need to know this angle here. Now, the way the sine rule works is you take sines and you put them opposite the angles that they go with. See this sine 10? It goes with the angle theta. And you see this 70 degrees? It goes with the sine 13. Now, the way the sine rule works is you can put the sine of an angle over the sine that it goes with. So sine theta goes with 10. And the sine of 70 goes with 13. So the, the way the sine rule works is you can go sine A over little a, the side opposite, equals sine B over little b. There's your fractions. Now you've got an unknown there called sine theta. Well, all you do is multiply both sides of this equation by 10. You get sine theta equals 10 sine 70 over 13. Now, this is just a number. And if you go ship sine of this number, your calculator will look up the angle. So that's what I did. Ship sine, sine inverse of 10 uh, sine 70 over 13. And the calculator tells me that it's 46.29 degrees rounded off to the nearest hundred. Well, now we know the angle theta, 46.29. All we have to do to get theta is go 180 minus those two added together. So you go 70 plus 46.29, subtract it from 180. My calculator tells me it's 63.71 degrees. Now we've got theta. The reason it works is because the angle is in a triangle sum to 180. Now, you could use the sine rule again, but I'd like to use the coach rule just to show you how it works. Now, if you want to find a sine in a triangle, you do what kind of looks like Pythagoras. You square the other two sides, but you subtract two times those sides multiplied together times the cosine of the angle that's in between them. That's coach rule. Square the two sides minus two times uh, the two sides multiplied together times the cosine of the angle in between. It looks like c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab times the cosine of c, the angle in between. Just put that in your calculator, take the square root, and you get your answer of 12.40 units. The next question. Well, it's the same sine rule thing. We just go, oh, okay, X goes with 115 degrees, and 7 goes with 22 degrees. So we can go X over the sine of 114 equals 7 over the sine of 22. Multiply both sides by sine 114, and then we put that in our calculator, and it tells us that it is 17.107 units. That's what it is. Okay, that's that one. Now what we do, now what we do is now that we know that, oh, to do the next question, what I need is I need to figure out what theta is. And all I do is add the other two angles and subtract from 180. And I think I get 136, 180 minus equals 44 degrees. So theta is 44 degrees because the angle's in a triangle sum to 180. Then we do the sine rule again. But this time, it's the angle 44 degrees that goes with 22. And it's the angle um, y that we used before. Actually, we should have stuck with that. y, uh, 7 goes with 22. And we're looking at y, so let me just bring this angle. Oop, I'm having trouble getting grabbing that angle. I'm gonna go the I'm gonna say that the theta goes with y there with that 44. That's what's going on. Y goes with 44. 44 degrees is opposite the side y. So I go y over the sine of 44 equals 7 over the sine of 22. Sides and the angles opposite them. That's the sine rule. Multiply by sine 44, 
uh, both sides. That's what y is going to equal. And then you put it in your calculator and it says it's 12.98 units. Now the last question is just, hey, you know, it's a right angle triangle. So you can use Pythagoras, square them, subtract them, take the square root, and you get the QP is 9. Now if you wanted to figure out um, theta, the sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, 12 over 15, or would reduce to 4 over 5. This goes shift sine of 4 over 5. And the angle turns out to be 53.13 degrees. Now, we could figure out this QP. A QP is the adjacent side over 15 equals the cosine of this new angle we got. We could use just um, the Sokotoa's uh, thing where sine is opposite over adjacent. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. QP is adjacent to theta. 15 is the hypotenuse. QP over 15 has to be the cosine of 53.13 degrees. And 53 times the cosine of 53.13, I put that on my calculator. Hey, look, another way of getting QP that equals 9. Well, there's the first three questions done. I hope that that helps. I hope it helps.